Hey guys, so I'm finally able to get around to finishing my alcohol marker, um, alcohol ink palette demonstration test. I don't know, it's kind of like evolved into this big whole thing. And last time I talked, or last time I saw you guys, I talked about testing it on the official Ranger papers. Ranger gloss, Ranger matte, and Ranger foil. Um, this is how my whole palette looks. Um, using the Ranger blender pin that you kind of have to assemble and you have to fill. Um, and I actually don't like this. What I like are the Tsukiniko Fantastics, and I have a brush one right here, and I have a bullet one I picked up recently, so I'm excited to see how that works. And I also have, um, the Ranger Craft Nib. Um, and it basically works on the same principle that the Sukiniko Fantastics work. And if you're interested in setting up your own alcohol ink palette, it's fairly easy to do once you have the inks. Um, I have videos on how I go about doing that in my on my channel. Probably have made a playlist for this by now. And I'm filling up a little container. It's actually a um, whole watercolor pan. I'm filling it up with the Ranger blending solution. And we're going to start with foil because I've uh, actually never played with foil like this before. This is like a foil paper. So I assume it's got mylar on it and you can see everything very clearly. And I think I'm going to get started by using the bullet nib fantastics. So you want to dip it in your blending solution and then kind of scrub it across your palette. Or your cake and I'm not seeing anything I don't know if that's the color because it is a very light color and it's one of the Copic various ink colors or if it's the foil or if it's the fantastics that one's a little bit better And I'm going to want to clean off my Fantastic a bit since it's got a bunch of browns in it and I'm switching to purple now. Oh, it seems like I never have. Um, never have clean paper towels when I want them. There they are. So I'm really unimpressed. Oh, there we go. Finally. So it seems like the dark colors might really do well with. And it seems like the Tim Holtz alcohol solution is the stickiest alcohol blending solution I've ever encountered. Um... On one of my prior videos, I was using plain rubbing alcohol. I think there's some glycerin in the blending solution to um, sort of slow the dry time a bit so it doesn't get wasted. But um, if you're using rubbing alcohol, it's cheap enough that you're not really wasting it if it evaporates a bit. All right, I'm going to skip straight to the Tim Holtings and see if... Those actually do handle better. All right, I'm impressed. Green is pretty powerful, so I gotta clean it out. Clean it out. Clean it out. Clean it out. Ugh, watermelon feels a little sticky. So it seems like the more um, color saturated. 
colors, the more like the darker colors, the more intense colors, or just the Tim Holtz colors. Um, they seem to do a little bit better on the foil than um, the various inks were. Even the lighter colors put down a pretty good. It's hard for you to see because I have ah, my my ceiling light is reflecting and the camera is also reflecting. So I'm going to have to change the angle for you guys to be able to see this in a minute. And, 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 and. So, looks like on the Tim Holtz foil paper, the Tim Holtz inks work best compared to Copic Various inks. Let me clean out my little tray. Something else you should be able to do is this is one of their mixatives, it's Snowcap, which I thought was interesting because it should give me an opaque white. So I'm shaking it up and I'm just going to drip it. Yeah, it is an opaque white, so it's pigment based. And let me get some other colors, I guess. Look how it's sort of spiraling out. It's a little bit hard to see where my cam because my camera's in the way. And why don't we try a spray? Let's see. What have I got? That would be good. Let's try wild plum because why not? So on the foil sheets, you can use sprays. You can go ahead and just drip your um, alcohol ink on top of it. You can paint onto it using um, Fantastics or the Craft Nib. You can probably use markers directly on it. Um, and it should dry fairly fast. It's taking a minute, but um, it should be probably dry in 10 minutes. So that's interesting. You can play around with it. So next we're going to take a look at Ranger Matte Paper, which still feels like it has a coating on it. To be honest, it really feels like um, printer photo, photo printer paper or uh, matte photo paper for your printer. That's, that's the phrase I'm looking for. It's basically a glossy paper that feels like it has a matte finish. And um, since this stuff is really annoyingly sticky, like it makes my hands really tacky, they feel really gross. I think I'm gonna switch back to good old regular rubbing alcohol. Which is cheap anyway, and then I spill some on the cardstock. And I'm having a tough time getting all of the wild plum out of my Fantastics. 
So I think I'm going to switch over to the bullet nib, I mean the brush nib one, which I've kind of better broken in anyway. So, um, looks like my rubbing alcohol made a big spot and I had some, what's it called on my hands, which got onto it. And I'm not trying as hard as I could to clean all of the ink out of the brush. That would be one of the benefits even of using this sort of system is that you can mix your colors kind of on the fly, like just now. And it doesn't, I mean, they don't have to be the best colors ever, but it's a more painterly approach to markers than um, what you might have access to already, to already, to already, to already, to already, to already, to. So it seems like the the ink sit on top of the paper rather than going in so it's a coated paper um with a matte finish on it on it let's try some of the ranger inks inks this probably means that layering isn't an easy task see how gross the it's kind of a pretty color Unfortunately, I'm going to have to clean it out because it will, con unlike watercolor water, um, it will contaminate. Oh, oh, see? Okay. So I'm going over it with more of that. And it isn't budging the first layer I put down. Not as much as you would think it would. So once you've applied color on this paper, you're not, it's not going to behave the way we think of when we think of, um, of um alcohol markers where it pushes it towards the back because there's a coating so there's nowhere for it to go so um and it doesn't really reactivate and scrub away quite as much so it's more like pit pins on paper than it is like alcohol inks on paper on this specific type of paper which i think is really interesting because there aren't necessarily a lot of uh a lot of alcohol marker papers that um, have these properties. Or maybe even like Yupo, if Yupo were more permanent. Yupo were more permanent. But most of the colors are vibrant and pretty. And I look forward to um, doing a more detailed test on this paper using these techniques or maybe even different techniques. Let's see if I can grab a couple of alcohol markers and we can see how those handle on this paper as well. Set this aside because I'm going to want to clean it. All right, let's try a couple of markers real quick. Copic markers. So they seem to go down just fine. See how they layer. They layer okay. Don't really reactivate, so that's interesting because um, you're getting a true layering of color instead of a sort of muddiness which pushes your color to the back. So I could see this paper taking a little bit of time to get used to. I already used Wap Plum. Let's, let's go with a Copic, Copic spray, Copic spray, Copic spray. Covid spray. Now, does it reactivate? Not too, too much. Hmm. Very interesting. I'm gonna have to play with this a little bit more later, and I'm definitely gonna have to do some ink compatibility tests to see what sort of inks will work on this interesting paper. So, lastly, we have the Ranger glossy paper, which is a lot like a photo paper, but it's not sticky on the hand. And this and the uh, foil paper are some of the most, wait, I want to get the other one. Some of the most interesting marker papers that I have in my current collection. Action. Action. So I'm going to go back to, in fact, I'm going to start doing the colors on the other side. We'll start with the Copic. Start with the Copic. Other than making a stupid noise, 
the Fantastic actually, since it holds more blending solution um, and has a wider nib, you can get a longer sort of blended stroke than you could with say the Chameleons, which I found <laughs> frustrating to use because um, the color would run out so quickly. It was hard for me to really utilize in the way I make art. And it also took me a lot longer. Now I'm using some of the ranger colors that I haven't yet demonstrated for you guys. And some of them are simply beautiful. Like Bottle is a really, really nice dark blue-green that doesn't lose the qualities of a blue-green the way some of the darker Copic blue-greens have. I mean, just look at that. Isn't that nice? Which one are you? That must be Stream. Nope, that's indigo. Very nice color. That's eggplant. So, really, on this paper, the colors, because there's a coating, and um, so you're never actually hitting the white of the paper. You're hitting um, something. Out. Oh, and it doesn't really move either. Like, even, so once you put that color down, that color is there. Um, so these, these are really interesting. Um, the foil paper is not something I can personally see myself using, although I can see a lot of other artists enjoying it. Um, it would just be difficult for me to use. But I can see myself using the glossy and the matte papers, especially if I can ink over them. So I look forward to checking in with you guys again with further tests regarding these interesting papers. I'm Becca Hilburn. If you enjoy this sort of content, please remember to subscribe to my channel. If you would like to help fund more content, and believe me, I could use your support, please check out my Patreon for more information. Um, I hope you guys have a great day. I'll see you later. Bye.